Hi, this is a video to introduce to the students how do you go about to download this Ripple Tank simulation that we have created and share with you some of the basic features in the simulation. Go to Google and type in Ripple Tank NTNU. And you will notice that it is the first hit on the search, which will bring you to this page. And after clicking on this, normally I do a right click and open to link a new tab. And this will bring you to this page, which you can see that you need to register in order to download the file. So let's say you have not downloaded this before. you need to register for an account otherwise though not recommended you can actually run the simulation from this screen or you can click on the full screen and it will begin to load up the simulation in the full view so because this is not recommended I will go back and show and continue from where I download this file so I'm going to click on it and your browser will prompt you to save it somewhere so for simplicity I'm just going to put it in my desktop after downloading click on the file and it should launch the simulation so double click on the top panel to make it go to full screen and you can see that this is actually a, a world view of the simulation on Ripple Tank. So let's quickly let's look at how you can use this. So first you need to select either the pen paper representation or the scalar view. So if it's a pen paper representation, you can see from here how the Ripple Tank simulation allows a student to see the series of crests that are coming out from S1 source and S2 source. S1 and S2 are actually dimples into the water surface causing this turbulence or, or disturbance which causes the water to then the water will propagate outwards. Now if on the other hand you would like to see how this is done in the scalar field representation you can see here this is actually the interference or ripple tank pattern so you can see if you want to pause and then you would like to forward but through small steps you can click on the step button and this will allow you to see time by time as the increment by delta t what is the result of the new interference pattern so let's say that you are interested to only see S1. So if there's only one S1, what will happen is this is a wave which is shown by the wave front or the crest of the water wave emitting out in uniform direction away from S1. And similarly, what you were likely to observe if they say there were only S2 alone, you will get the same result, the same pattern of uniform water circular waves emitting out from S2. So as a result of S1 and S2 and what happens if you put them together and this is the actual resultant of the wave pattern and from here you can actually do scientific inquiry to allow yourself to get a deeper understanding of the phenomena of interference with respect to ripple tank. So I'm going to stop the simulation and I'm going to activate this series of radio buttons. So after ex looking at the di different radio buttons, now let's this one we just ignore for the time being. It allows you to do coherence inter interference if the sources were coherent. Now you can check all radio. This actually activates the side profile of the dimples that are going up and down into the water surface to create this 
pattern on the water surface so as you can see this is actually moving up and down together okay so through either through controlling you can pause the simulation and drag and you can see how you can actually move S1 and S2 together and then continue to play and you can see how the pattern will be shown let's uncheck the pen paper representation and continue with just the scalar field representation so this allows the student to see what will be the resultant ripple tank so these are actually slider bars to control the position of the various objects so in this case this slider can control the variables of in this case S1X and S1Y so if you want to find control this you can actually come into the input fields key in the value that you desire for example in my case I would like to investigate negative 0.5 notice it is still in yellow so you need to press on your keyboard enter uh, likewise this is okay and I like this to be 0.5 enter and this one I like it to be 0 Okay, so this gives you a fine control over the positions coordinates of S1 and S2. Now there's something else here called P. So P is actually to allow you to investigate what is the position here. So for example, again you can manually do this on the screen by clicking, left clicking on it. And moving it around while dragging it or you can again do this fine control over here okay 0 0.6 for example and remember to press enter so now I can click play and you can see how this actually is actually moving for the different sources so now to look at the P you need to activate the graph so from the graph you can actually activate this and you can actually now look at the various waves that are coming into position P. This Y1 is the displacement coming in from S1 as it travels through a, a path length of 3.12 lambda, lambda being the, the wavelength of the wave. And S2P will be S2P. So it will be this length and it will be also 3.12 lambda. As a result of this, displacement, instantaneous displacement at position P will be denoted by this graph which is continuously being varied by time. And you can see it's moving up and down. Likewise, you can check on Y2 because it's completely overlapping each other. So you can see that this is actually one over the other. And this is the resultant. So you can see from here there's a certain pattern to it as Y1 and Y2 add together, that gives you a larger displacement. So I'm going to pause this. I can move this to another position, let's say here. And you can notice now the path different S1P, which is this length, S1P is 3.38 lambda. And S2P, this length, is actually 2.88 lambda. So now the path difference is actually 0 0.5 lambda. And it is actually now destructively interfering, as being shown here by the hint. So you can see how come the, the graph isn't showing destructive interference. That's because you need to play the simulation to collect new data. And you can see that now, as a result of the wave coming in, Y1, which is over here, adding superposition with y2 which is the wave over here you get a resultant which is zero so this gives you the time based vari variability graph and this is actually what you can see if this is the actual displacement so you can see that the resultant is actually a f zero all the while so you can pause this now control this 
uh, by changing this to zero okay and okay let's let's reset this you can also change this to zero or any value that you desire let's say 0 0.5 and you can see what will be the resultant Pattern. there is also the hint that you can activate which is a new design feature which I have added to allow the students to make the learning more generalizable to other aspects of the trends that we want students to realize so you may look at look dig, look at this again this series of visualization you can change so this changes the different colors that you can toggle though not terribly useful or necessary but it gives the students uh, a meaning of what these various shades of blacks and whites actually could represent now this is the other cool feature which I talk, talk about okay now here you can actually press a shift and mouse and then you can drag it and then you can see how this actually shows you the three-dimensional view of the ripple tank so you can see in a in a pseudo 3d that actually the the wave actually is moving from left to right while it shows you the three-dimensional aspect of the interference so this is pretty nice uh, this is something you should try on your own now the next thing I'd like to share is the various legends so this is the ripple tank the legend so what happened is uh, through a series of color representation you can see that actually for the case of negative 2 which is actually shown as dark so if the displacement is negative 2 it means it's at the bottom which is the trough so it's actually represented by a neck uh, by a black line a black color and then similarly for white it will be the positive 2 displacement then you can also check on the other inter the intensity check boxes and you can also see the different legends which then shows you that from for for the interference pattern it actually shows you from 0 to 4 that is the reason because the, as you square the displacement or amplitude in this case you get the intensity so you can see from here that when you square 2 you get 2 squared which is actually 4 